Hey everybody, in my last video I went over some tips on how I color grade my S-Log2 footage. Now there was a ton of great feedback on that video and I'm very appreciative for all of you that took the time out to watch it. Now the two most frequently asked questions I get when shooting an S-Log2 are number one, what are my picture profile settings? And number two, how do I properly expose when shooting an S-Log2? Now my goal for today's video is to cover both of those topics for you as well as talk about a couple of different monitoring options and I want to go over how you can convert your log image into a Rec. 709 image, whether you're using Adobe Premiere Pro or even DaVinci Resolve. So if that's something that might interest you, make sure to stick around. So first off, let's tackle that first question. What are my picture profile settings? And the truth is, it's just the standard picture profile 7 S-Log2 settings that Sony creates when they send these cameras out. I found that overall the detail and highlight roll off on these settings work best for me and they look better than any other profile on the Sony a7 III. And trust me, I've tried every other creator's picture profile settings and none have created an image that I've ever been happy with. So if you've changed your picture profile 7 settings in the past, you can easily go down here and hit reset to start from scratch. But for safety, let's run down what I've got going on here. So as you can see, my black level is set to zero, gamma is set to S-Log2, let's click under black gamma, my range will be set to middle, level is zero. We can hop into knee here, and we'll set the mode to auto and leave the rest of these things the same. Our color mode, we want to be S-Gamut, saturation can be zero, color phase can also be zero. Let's hop into color depth and make sure all of these are set to zero, and in detail, it'll be set to negative seven. And that's about it. Like I said, there's nothing fancy going on here. It's just the standard S-Log2 settings that Sony's created. Now, the most important thing about shooting an S-Log2 is making sure you have an understanding of how to expose, balance, and correct your image in post. So let's jump into that next. Now, the good news is, is shooting an S-Log2 will give you a lot of creative flexibility to correct and grade your image. But just so you know, it's not going to solve any issues for you. It's not gonna solve any problems, and it's definitely not gonna make your footage cinematic by any means. There's a lot more that plays into that. My advice would be is get yourself an external monitor that you can load 3D LUTs onto. I prefer the Atomos monitors as they double as recorders, but any other monitor that lets you import LUTs is gonna do just fine. You can load your camera manufacturer's conversion LUT onto them, or you can even build your own LUTs and load those right on. I tend to have a mix of both, plus a few made by cinematographers that I've just found helpful. The other huge benefit of an external monitor is that most offer the option of using false color and waveform monitors. These are two by far my most used exposure tools. Now I'm not gonna give you a full breakdown on how either of these work. If that's something you'd like to see in the future, maybe comment down below. But for now, all you need to understand is that these tools will give you a far more accurate reading of your exposure than the camera's internal histogram. So what happens when you don't have an external monitor, whether you can't afford one or you don't have the bandwidth to carry one on you, which is oftentimes the case with me when I'm on a backpacking trip? Well, my friend, that's where zebras come into place. <laughs> No, not those kinds of zebras. Zebras are a fantastic exposure tool and the one that I use when I can't utilize an external monitor. They simply work by highlighting a part of your image with dashed lines, giving you an indication of what the exposure level is for those specific areas. So you can set a custom level for where you want the zebras to appear. Some like to set them around 60 to 70 IRE so they appear where skin tones are because that's where you usually try to expose skin tones. But personally, I like to use them as a way to gauge if my highlights are blown out or not. So what I do is I set my zebras to 100 plus in the menu. This lets me know that anytime the zebras do appear on my image, that part of the image is blown out and I will not be able to recover those highlights. What I'll do is I usually expose my image as bright as I can, just until the zebras appear, and when I do see them, I'll dial it back a little bit until they're gone. And that's about it. Like I said, it's not rocket science. It just ensures that you're able to retain all of your dynamic range, and it lets you overexpose without clipping your highlights. Now, let's jump into Premiere Pro so I can show you how to convert that log image into a Rec. 709 image. So now that we have our footage into Premiere, we're gonna start by using Sony's standard s Gamut 2 to Rec. 709 conversion LUT. You'll notice that after applying, the image is gonna be way too bright. Don't be scared. Remember, we overexpose this image on purpose. Now let's hop into the basic controls on the right and bring our exposure down while monitoring our scopes. Can you see how the waveform starts to balance out as we bring that down? This is the process that I start with when grading all of my Sony a7 III footage. 
By doing this, I'm setting up all of my footage for the color grading process. It's important to remember that you should balance and correct all of your images before starting the color grading process because it's going to save you a lot of time fussing around later. Now there's an even cooler way to do this within DaVinci Resolve. So let's hop into there and I'll show you how. So we have the same clip in Resolve and as you can see I'm in the color panel here. We'll start by creating a few extra nodes. Let's hop into Open Effects and find the Color Space Transform tool. We're going to drag that over onto this node here. And if you see on the menu, we just need to add our input and output gamma, as well as a few additional details. And as you can see here, it's the same as before. We overexposed our image when shooting, so we'll need to jump into our lift gamma gain to drop down our exposure. I usually start with gamma. And boom, that's all you have to do. We've just converted our log image into a Rec. 709 image, and we've balanced it out to a proper exposure, and now we're ready for the grading process. It's really that easy, folks. That was a lot, I know, and I had a lot of questions about shooting and exposing with S-Log2. I'm not able to cover everything, but I do hope that I answered a lot of your questions. There's so much that I wasn't able to cover in this short video, so if you have any questions or you want to see something in another future video, make sure to drop them in the comments below and I'll try to get to them. And also, sorry for the lack of uploads on this whole YouTube thing. I'm currently working a full-time production job and I just moved to Berkeley with my girlfriend, so things have been a little bit busy these last couple of weeks. I truly appreciate you all watching and joining me on this YouTube journey. Hopefully by the time this video comes out, I will have hit a thousand subscribers or at least be close to a thousand subscribers. And that's pretty crazy. I just, I never thought I would even really get to that point. If you want to stay updated on my work, new videos and other fun things like that, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Timmy Lodi. And until the next one, I'll see you later. Peace.